Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Continuing with our series of interaction with toppers, we have another achiever here, Ravi Shank Hari Shankar, sir. He has scored AIR 107. And to mention, he's just a commerce graduate. He has done his BCom honors. And we would be welcoming him on stage today to walk us through his journey of UPSC CSC, how he was able to prepare for commerce and accountancy optional, and what all key takeaways can we have from her, his journey. Also, we'll have a session of question and answers where you, you'll be able to ask questions from sir. So please put your hands together and welcome on stage. G. Hari Shankar, sir, AIR 107. Uh, yes, okay. because I'm pretty loud, so I would, would not need a mic as such. Okay. Yes, it's on. Uh, you can take this. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, this warm welcome. And uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, being with me throughout this journey and guiding me through the commerce option. I have been, uh, I've been fortunate enough. I think fortunate is the right word to say that uh, I have secured a rank uh, 107. So, uh, first, so I, I just want to start off on that note. I, I remember, I'll just start off with a small anecdote, might not be very relevant for you guys, but uh, I remember I left my job. I worked for four years in private sector. I left my job in April and uh, this was CSE 2021. I did not expect that I would clear my prelims. So I thought that let's take one thing at a time. I did not take any coaching at that point uh, for mains. So I spent around five months for uh, my prelims preparation. October was the prelims in that year because that was the Corona year. Fortunately, I passed prelims. Uh, but it was also a bit unfortunate for me because my first mains that year, I think there was only 85 days to mains. Now there are 110 days that we get. It was 85 days for mains. And uh, first day, once I understood that I was clear, I was going to clear prelims on the basis of my analysis. I called, uh, I firstly called uh, Nikhil Bhaiya. He's uh, currently IPS serving in the West Bengal cadre. Uh, so Nikhil Bhaiya, I called up and I asked him, what is the game plan? How do I do this? And uh, he said that, see, the biggest problem is going to be optional because general studies is general in nature. And uh, by virtue of being uh, non-science students, we have a habit of writing a lot of uh, pages, right? So we don't, we don't have an issue in writing as such. So he said that you are going to be able to score decent marks there. Essay you will manage, ethics you will manage. The biggest challenge is going to be optional because that will be the make or break case. And he said that you should call sir up and uh, speak to him once on what should be the way forward. So he gave me uh, uh, RS Agarwal sir's number and he told me that sh I should speak to him. I called sir up and said that, sir, is this even possible? Should I even try to do this in the 75, 80 days that I have left? Or should I now say that, okay, this is not doable. Let me focus on the next attempt and let me cover as much as possible in this attempt, which a lot of people do, by the way. First attempt means, first means people generally just take it lightly, say that, I'm going to focus on my GS, cover that, or just focus on my optional. I called sir up and said that, see, if you are a commerce uh, graduate and uh, decent, uh, decent understanding of commerce, 85 days is more than sufficient for you to cover optional twice and come back, do your GS. So that gave me a lot of confidence at that point, sir. And as luck would have it, I would just put it on fate. That that year I cleared means cleared interview and uh, secured a rank of 307. And uh, that year I got through to Danix. So uh, I think that confidence that came from that call was very helpful for me. And uh, soon after that, I purchased the books uh, of rankers and I started practicing them. Right. So thank you so much, sir, on Thanks. for that. So discuss your total yes. commerce strategy paper sure. one, first paper one, what books you studied. Uh, yes. Apart from the interest classes, right. what test total plan you follow? Sure, sure. Sir, I'm good. Thank you, sir.
perfect 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 so i'll try to keep my uh, strategy to a minimum uh, because i think we can always have those uh, uh, deeper on those questions as we get the questions also so i'll just start off by saying that uh, i uh, i focused on my strategy was that it's optional so after this story let's let's uh, continue this story after this story happened uh, i found out what the advantages and disadvantages of commerce take in commerce optional are the advantages of course are that i could do that in 85 days get a rank and get a decent service right i was uh, i was in a good service i am currently in indian defense account service which is a good service again uh, so i am really liking it this year let's see what service i get allocated to so that's the good part with commerce optional you get uh, it's a low risk optional you will hardly get below 240 if you are you are writing your exam decently which is not the case in psir anthropology or sociology i have seen people have a wide fluctuation of marks i have a colleague of mine who scored 220 year to this year so that that variation you would hardly see in commerce so it gives you a bare min bare, uh, it gives you an average and it is a better predictable way of getting through into the list. the second thing that i would say disadvantage is that it would require you to outperform in your gs ethics and to secure a top 100 rank so if you are someone who says that i have to get ias right and no other service is made for me which i don't think we all can claim because we don't know much about the services i don't know much about my service till i joined it and it's a great service now so if if that is the case if top 100 is the only objective that you have then this this optional let's face it gives you certain disadvantage which means that you have to overcome that disadvantage to overcome that disadvantage is to outperform in the five other papers that you have right so uh, that broadly the thinking that i had from day one so what did i do about it i said that see commerce optional is going to give me 250 to 280 marks i knew that i would not go below 250 because i had a decent understanding of uh, all the papers so i thought that theek hai worst case below, not to below 250 max i will get to 280 to 290 so what do i do with that knowledge i have to spend much more time on my gs 1 2 ethics and sa so i have to reduce time here and reallocate time there right so that was point number 1 of my strategy point number 2 of the strategy was how do i time in commerce optional right because i have to reapportion that time the way to do that was that i will have a limited source of knowledge but will hit maximum targets right so for that for instance i said uh, i spoke to sir sir said that see income tax is something which is critical is going to be very difficult for you to cover up and it hardly yields any results so i said that income tax numerical i will not attempt it right similarly there are certain areas such as amalgamation i said that this has a very low return in terms of input output ratio i will not end so i made a strategy for myself that what is it that i am going to do what is it that i am not going to do so that, so that i keep my preparation to a bare minimum here i would like to bring out okay hello is this better uh, can we have some feedback from the online no it's not better someone said it's better yeah yeah it's now better it's not better. right so i will carry on then uh yeah so so firstly i uh, went back i read the strategy like for instance you are listening to me right now uh, for my strategy i looked at uh, shubham agarwal sir's strategy he's from uh, srcc he's uh, uh, he's 2019 batch srcc i think and uh, he cleared upsc in his first attempt there is a very great that it's one of the one stop things that you must read if you are a commerce optional uh, aspirant uh, there is a blog by shubham agarwal sir where he details his strategy out and i think that became the starting point for me uh, that was my source of truth that that's going to be 
how I am going to perform, right? Uh, and on the basis of that, I made a slight tweaks. Now my strategy in commerce optional, let's just pick optional commerce optional for now. Uh, having understood that we have to reduce time in commerce optional and we have to maximize our input to output ratio there. So my way of doing things here was that I said that, let me try to focus on. So there is a, a trade-off again, paper one versus paper two. So I said that I looked at the previous year's course paper two, fortunately or unfortunately in the last three, four years has not been giving very varied results. It's always been in the range of 120 to 130. If you are a great performer, maybe 130. For instance, Gariva Lohia ma'am, I think scored very high in that, but that was also not in a, a next league apart. So, right. So it's going to be 15, 20 marks here and there. Uh, and I had, I did not have a very good handwriting. So I knew that in a theory paper, I am going to be at a disadvantage. So I thought that see, op paper two is not going to give me great results. Uh, so paper two, I said that, okay, fine. Uh, Rankers had given a good set of materials. Plus I thought that Shubham Agarwal sir's notes on paper two were a crisp summary of uh, sir's notes. So I depended on both of those and, uh, I just practiced them, repractice them. Every word of it. I remember, right? So every word of Shubham Agarwal sir's notes I had by heart. I did not try to do a lot of value addition in my first attempt on that, uh, on my, even my second attempt on that, because it's. Uh, we have to see the input output ratio. It's not giving as uh, good yields. There are two reasons for it. Firstly, uh, in any theory paper, it's very difficult to differentiate yourself too much, especially if you don't have a very good handwriting. The second aspect is that the paper in itself, if you go back to the last three, four years paper, the quality of paper has been very average. It's been very, very basic questions, which don't allow you to differentiate too much. For instance, they have asked you questions such as. What is the role of recruiting? What is the importance of recruiting? It's very difficult for you to write a three page answer, uh, with a lot of dip differentiation on it. So I would suggest that go back to your paper two, and you will see that maybe three, four questions they are asking on some particular theories, right? For instance, Victor Wurum's theory, etc., which is helpful, but even there, you will see that they are not asking theories, which others won't know. For instance, they ask questions on Maslow's theory. This is something that everyone who has done BCom graduation will be able to write three pages on. They are going to be able to make a diagram. So it's very difficult to differentiate in paper two. I'm not saying that you should not do it, but I would say keep your resources sources to a minimum and over practice that if you have a source of value addition, just ruminate over that again and again, try to get perfection in that, try to focus on how I can present better in a theory paper. All that matters is presentation more than your content content of course matters, but presentation matters more. Uh, in terms of that, the second point in paper two is that you must write more because I have uh, studied three years in Delhi university for those who have not studied in Delhi university. Uh, I'll just tell you that professors go for quantity over quality first and the next two marks, maybe you will get for your quality. But if you write a two pager for a three page answer, you are not going to get marks. I can assure you that. So. So Delhi university uh, requires you to fill all pages, right? So go for quantity and then go for quality presentation, etc. You have to focus on, but that will bare minimum is quantity. So a necessary condition is quantity and uh, presentation quality, more underlining, etc., is going to be quality, which is going to get on top of that, which is a sufficiency condition. So that's on paper two. So I said my theory, my thesis was that. Paper two is not going to differentiate me because of my disadvantage of handwriting because of the historical non-variance in scores. So I was, I realized that paper two is not going to be a big decider in my rank. So that being said, then come, then comes the thesis that, okay, so then paper one is the deciding factor and it is the deciding factor because you will see even this year's marks that scores are varied from 157, 158 to 120 and 110. So there is a 30 to 40 mark variation there. And for those who have not seen the marks list yet, 30 to 40 marks is more than 400 ranks. So there is a 400 to 500 rank difference in your paper one itself. So now comes the question, how do you tackle paper one? Paper one, again, if you have seen the paper, it will, uh, and, uh, I'm not going into a inside out strategy right here because I'm not taking that 
इसमें ये ये सब्जेक्ट्स हैं एंड लेट्स सी व्हाट हाउ वी कैन टैकल इट सब्जेक्ट राइट यस सो आई स्टडीड फॉर ऑप्शनल वन एंड टू बोथ रैंकर्स कोचिंग ओनली क्लासेस ओनली द द बुक्स दैट वी हैव नथिंग एडिशनल सर आई फॉर वंस थॉट ऑफ गोइंग बैक टू माय बीकॉम बुक्स फॉर एफ एम बट आई डिड पिकअप रुस्तगी सर बुक but i realized that the most critical questions from there were already covered in your books in terms of fm so i realized that uh, rankers classes and questions for paper 1 especially covered how do i put it so it covered all the important questions but it did not cover the fringe topics which never get asked in optional right so it's very important with this optional knowing what we do to not focus too much on your fringe topics for instance sir's book has only let's say four or five questions in amalgamation which is right because it's a topic which has a lot of variants upsc has been asking very tough questions historically and probably even if we we did 50 questions on it there is a chance that we may not be able to solve it right so it's good to focus on for in, but for instance if we go to capital budgeting sir's book has around 100 or plus questions on that because that is a short short question you are going to get a question on plant and machinery on that right so i i personally found that sir your questions uh, the book had important questions but did not diverge too much into fringe topics uh, so i did not uh, i i focused on that also because i had limited time i did not want to diverge yes so coming to areas that i skipped in paper 1 uh, firstly taxation i skipped the entire numerical part so i advised me because i did not have too much time on my hand and i had spoken to people uh, like for instance atish bhatia was there uh, who's a college colleague of mine um, ritika ma'am was there uh, who's again a college colleague of mine i spoke to them and they told me that see if you are going to attempt an income tax question the chance of getting it right in 20, 15 minutes see 15 minutes is the time that you have to get any numerical right to get a tax question right in 15 minutes is going to be very difficult and for you to get good marks and that is also going to be very difficult third aspect is that tax is not static tax is something which gets uh, updated for instance i will tell you that there are a few ca friends of mine who uh, who had the curse of knowing too much in 2020 csc uh, there was a question in commerce optional which was regarding the calculation of residential income and in that question there was an assumption which was to be taken on how many properties are allowed for exemption some of my ca friends because that year there was a rule which was updated to allow more than one property uh, they had taken another assumption and uh, they scored very poorly so taxation always comes with that risk that you don't know whether the examiner is updated with the rules or not what is the assumption that you take you don't know that so my strategy was that income tax is something that i am going to avoid completely in terms of sir amalgamation i skipped i did a few questions sir because because uh, the risk with leaving amalgamation altogether is that uh, both amalgamation and uh, and tax would come under the paper uh, in the first part of your paper so if you skip both and you don't have any idea of amalgamation and just by chance the third question is something that you are not comfortable in there are three questions in every part that you have to select at least one question from so if you are not comfortable with the third question then uh, you would lose out on a large number of marks so amalgamation sir my strategy was that i did not completely leave it but i said that whatever questions you had in the book i would do that so that just in case i have to attempt amalgamation i have some idea of how to attempt it but i will not put too much effort into it because sir also i felt that uh, i especially remember there was one question in the previous year uh, previous year where was where there was intercompany holding yes sir so and uh, even after that there have been a few questions which were not very straight forward uh, there was uh, there were questions on internal reconstruction which was which were not very straight forward yes sir so so i thought that that is a risk that i don't want to take uh, alternatively i did internal reconstruction very well i did uh, financing of shares share purchase very well and uh, all the other topics final accounts is another topic where you would find it very difficult to complete final accounts in 15, 15 minutes so a lot of people would in their strategy felt that we will not attempt final accounts because it's to be done in 15 minutes and would rather attempt let's say amalgamation but according to me it's much easier to 
not apply your brain in the exam over practice finance final, uh, final accounts and ensure that you can do it in 15 minutes ghar se karke ja sakte ho wo aap like you practice final accounts i practiced final accounts ke questions for like 20 30 times so at the end of it i knew exactly what i have to write after what also sir uh, i think sir has in his final accounts uh, chapter written how to reduce time in uh, in uh, preparation of final accounts so that is also very helpful so once you mechanically are able to you know fill in all the aspects of final accounts it's doable in 15 minutes so that is something that you have to focus on uh sir i did not leave any chapter because there is a big risk but yes sir tax was left amalgamation was left so i was not in a position to take a risk on uh, costing but i would say that i did not prepare very well uh chapters such as process costing i did it but i did not let's say for instance practice it too much uh because i knew for instance sir that process costing is a chapter when i solved the questions i knew that it was taking me around 18 to 20 minutes to solve a question and the questions for instance this year there was this question on inter process profits which is a question which is tough to solve in 15 minutes and those people who did choose that question i have not met anyone who has done that correctly yet because it was a tough question um, not tough because it's it requires mental capacity but it's tough to solve it in 15 minutes and it's a high probability that you would tricky tricky issue in that sir sir i completely did it fm because i felt that sir because i was weak in uh, final accounts because i had left amalgamation and uh, i had left taxation numerical completely i had to overcompensate in all other subjects how much marks you wanted to take sir i think it's for 158 i'm sorry i uh, yeah i i don't remember correctly but i think it's 158 sir and last year also it was in the similar zone because last year i scored 283 in commerce option did you put hmm. it yes sir so my strategy on paper 1 uh, theory and uh, numerical both was uh, again this is a strategy that nikhil bhaiya had told me nikhil agarwal uh, bhaiya had told me that uh, the funda is theory in theory in uh, numerical and numerical in theory right so i ensured that jo bhi theory part hai uh, which was again almost uh, 170 odd marks uh, right because if you take four numerical questions that would almost mean 80 marks and uh, you would have 170 to 180 marks of theory so i ensured that every theory question of mine had some illustration or some numerical as possible for except maybe let's say uh, fi mai which is financial markets where it was very uh, financial market institutions which was difficult to incorporate numericals all other topics of theory i ensured that i had an illustration and that illustration was prepared at home i did not want to in innovate or do anything there so i wrote down sir i had a 10 odd page uh, illustrations list so i knew exactly that if there is a question on npv modular milani what is the numerical what is the number what is the ebit i will take what is the taxation rate what is the rate of return what is the cost of capital so i had written down everything and i had memorized it by heart because uh, i will give you an interesting example there is a ca friend of mine who ended up for, there was a question sir this year on ebit eps analysis uh, there was a ca friend of mine who created an example there and unfortunately the uh, the indifference point came out negative so so we don't know how the illustration will pan out if we don't have that ready in our hands this is a subject where you can have multiple like you can go wrong very easily for instance irr can be non if you if there is a question on irr and you make make up the irr there firstly you lose time secondly you don't know what the answer will be so yes sir right sir right right sir absolutely sir yes sir sir on in my theory in my numerical paper also i had the uh, in my numerical questions also i made it a best practice that i would include some theory uh, for instance you will see in the if you look at the question paper booklets of upsc you will see that 
usually there is one question there is some space left beneath and then from the next pa next page you can answer question so that part where there is a after the question there is some space i ensured that i will write some theory about it so for instance i will write uh, if it's a question on final accounts i'll say that the following illustration has been prepared as per as per schedule 3 of the companies act 2013 so i ensured that in every numerical question i would write something for instance if it's standard costing then i would ensure that i would write that this is the variance i will write the answer first because what can also happen is that uh, because there is a chance of cutting in the answer the person who's checking your answer might not see your answer uh, or might not be able to get to the so this is something that i used to follow in bcom also that whatever numerical i solve i will write the answer before that so i will write that the standard variance is rupees xx yy according to the following calculation then i will write the theory what are the causes what are the probable causes of this and then i will solve the question so that the even if they don't look at the answer they will at least know that i've gotten the answer right and they know that i know more than everyone else i'll be able to differentiate in the first page itself so that was one strategy i had sir uh any answer in paper one sir i stuck to solving all questions so it was a bit boring but uh, every year i ensured that for financial management and costing especially i uh, solved every day i spent around 2 hours doing different types of questions so one question of financial after prelims so final accounts one final one question of final accounts will take me 15 minutes i knew that i could solve around if i could solve around eight questions in 2 hours then that that is the practice that i needed anyways the questions did not require me to like there was no there, after a point in time there will not be any questions where you will have any doubts it will only be that you are committing errors and that's why you are taking longer so i thought that if i am able to do eight questions in 2 hours then i am broadly right uh and sir uh, one other thing i understood while attempting the paper for 3 years is that the paper is less about knowing more but it's more about getting accuracy so i knew that it did not matter if i took up three more books and solved them what mattered more was how many times i had done the same question because i had to do it in 15 minutes and if there is for instance a dividend question i have to do it in 8 to 10 minutes because i am going to there is a chance that final accounts does not tally i have to go back and i have to see what error that i have done then in that case i will take around 22 minutes in that or 20 minutes in that so i have to have certain areas which i can solve in 8 to 10 minutes so sir i was very particular about timing before we put this theory which you revise time and again memorize during more theory paper 1 paper 1 sir theory paper 1 i made sure that i had a key list of points for each question for instance sir uh, for instance if there is modigler milani i ensured that i knew that i have to write three assumptions i had to write uh, two three points in the theory then i had to write two or three criticisms so i had ensured that i don't write it in a paragraph form and uh, honestly sir i did not practice the theory theory part too much uh, i did not i just read them again and again uh, i did not write them too much sir i thought the notes were sufficient uh, the notes were already summarized so i did not want to recreate notes because again that would take up some time yes sir because sir absolutely sir because especially uh, in paper 1 the notes which are prepared are uh, there are few questions which have a very uh, you know they they because sir paper 1 especially rankers classes notes are in point wise format in a lot of questions there are bullet points where you can just you know, you don't have to recreate that in your notes uh in paper 2 i would say that you can refer to either shubham agarwal sir's notes for pointers because uh, rankers theory is in paragraph form and you might want to write it in uh, point form or you can also create pointers out of the paragraphs that you have based on how much time you have okay sir okay. right another aspect which helped me sir this year especially because last year it was not there but this year for theory the other thing that i did was i focused on the uh, previous year answers and solution key that you had provided so that also almost if you are able to cover all questions from that because you will see that pyq in theory especially pyq is repeated left right and center 
there is no new question which comes generally in paper one. So if you can, you know, mug up those questions very well and you can uh, write them, then that should be enough. I would say I did do practice for some questions. So in theory, also, I knew that there are some questions which allow me differentiation. For instance, theories such as modular Milani model or uh, Durand model, etc. So those questions I knew that, for instance, I, if I take the dividend model, right, Walter Modern and Gordon model, I knew that everyone is able to is going to be able to write the theory part of it. But again, I needed to get that illustration right, and that illustration requires you to memorize nine values. So I had, I had to memorize that entire table and I had to write it a few times so that I'm able I'm able to write that. So my theory, my approach was that I would attempt those questions where there were some models involved or some way I could differentiate and some, some technical parts, sir, which I can differentiate in because I was, uh, that was my strong suit that I could remember numericals and I could write those illustrations. Yes, sir. Sir, so paper two, as I said, I primer, primary source was uh, Shubham Agarwal sir's notes because uh, it was in point wise format. I did not have too much time. Uh, wherever there were some areas uh, where there was some uh, there were some parts which were not covered. For instance, motivation chapters notes were not fully or leadership chapters notes were not fully covered. And uh, uh, those questions get asked a lot. So I referred to rankers materials for those areas which were not present there. Uh, thirdly, I used chat GPT a lot this year. Please don't do that in your first year or second year, I would suggest. Or especially first year, second year, you might do that. But if you're crunched for time, uh, don't go for too much value addition uh, in paper two. I think the theories which are provided in Sir's notes and Shubham Agarwal Sir's notes are sufficient. The key again there is that how well are you able to present it and how well are you able to understand, uh, recreate it. For instance, uh, please focus more on keywords. I used to, for each question, for each topic, I focused primarily on what are the five, six, seven keywords that I must write here. For instance, uh, if uh, I can recall, uh, for for instance, if there is uh, McKinsey's uh, 7S framework, uh, then there was this one keyword which was uh, involved, which was... Uh, Yes, sir. So the seven S was there, but there was one very good keyword on synchronization of the seven S, uh, which I'm not fully able to recall right now, but each theory question, I ensured that I remember a few good keywords and in each point you should have some keywords because otherwise it just looks like an English paper. So you will have to have some good keywords such as, uh, uh, how do you put, let's say for instance, value engineering is a good keyword that you can use say, uh, uh, atrophy of uh, business due to, let's say, uh, 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 technological, technological changes or, uh, labor turnover. Right. Yeah, so many keywords, right? yes, right, right, sir. Right. sir. right man or right job. And, uh, you can have multiple such keywords, which you can create a, uh, compendium of that. You are going to use this. Another approach that I used to have is, uh, with keywords is that for each for instance, with uh, uh, HRM, I had a list of keywords, which I thought that because HRM, every chapter is linked to every chapter. So I thought that irrespective of what chapter comes, I'm going to write these keywords because all, yes, sir. Everything is similar. So the only differentiated uh, differentiation is going to be, what are the keywords that you are going to use? So I ensured that I, I was going to use those keywords. Another thing which helped me, sorry, sir, you were saying. No, sir. I did not prepare because the base was already there in my second year. I prepared an extensive list of value additions. So for instance, I had a list of value for instance, uh, in the, in the part on labor, right. Uh, uh, labor issues, industrial, industrial, uh, yes, sir. Industrial labor issues. So on that subject, I made a list of all the sections which were relevant. I made a list of the keywords. So especially, and I ensure, so that will give you one idea. One, one idea is that you will know that where do you have some value addition? So you will attempt only those questions in the paper because everyone is going to be able to write the basic theory about let's say labor turnover or human resource management. What will differentiate is you is for instance, I would always go for a question on strike because I remember the section of industrial, uh, industrial disputes act for strike. So I prepared a very concise list of value addition that I will use in paper two. I created a list of case studies 
that I am going to write. Again, don't create case studies for every sub topic of each subject. Have three, four case studies for each subject, which you can use everywhere. For instance, I remember that for Air India, Tata acquired Air India, right? So I had this. So they had a artificial intelligence program called Vihan AI. So I thought that any question of any subject on organizational theory, OT that I get, which is related to structure, I am going to use Vihan AI. So I ensured that I wrote that case study. So you don't need to create case studies for each and every subject and each and every paper. You can have a compendium of five, six relevant recent cases. One management study is applicable to papers. Absolutely, sir. So, right, sir. So right, sir. Writing practice yes, sir. I did a lot of writing practice in paper too, especially with theories. So my approach again was that I'm not going to be able to differentiate in generic questions. So I focused a lot on theory uh, questions, which had uh, some specific theories, like for instance, Victor room valence expectancy, instrumentality theory, et cetera. So I did a lot of practice on what is the diagram that I'm going to write? What is the case study that I will write? For instance, what are the advantages, disadvantages? So I, and that was sort of also because I knew the theory so well, I used to do this in break. Like I used to take 15 minutes off and I used to write that one question of, uh, theory and uh, I was done with that. I did not sir, write questions such as importance of selection recruitment, which I, anyways, I knew that I'm yes. going to write generic answers on. So can we query now? Yes. Right. So numerical questions, uh, you will, for, there are two types of theory that you can write in numerical questions. Firstly, questions which require you to analytically solve something like for instance, dividend, uh, you will require to write theories such as what is the dividend policy that a firm should use. So you can start by saying that, uh, the dividend, the share, the share price of the firm, when dividend is paid according to the Walters model at, uh, let's say 10% is X. Uh, it's why at when the dividend payout ratio is 40%, hence as per Walter's model, the company should have hundred percent dividend payout or 0% dividend payout, right? There Where there is interpretation analysis involved, standard costing, marginal costing, capital structuring, uh, capital budgeting, uh, working, uh, uh, VAC and cost of capital. All these questions require some analysis. So broadly, you can say that financial management costing, um, uh, and such areas where numericals require analysis, you can write this, but Absolutely. Yes, sir. Hmm. So prelims, my approach was, uh, if we take one by one prelims again, uh, I'm someone who's very output oriented. So I, uh, that also comes from my work experience. So I did not believe in covering everything, uh, going for NCRTs and et cetera, et cetera. I, I thought that, let me see what the paper has and let me see where my strengths are. And then I will work backwards. So, uh, for me, prelims has two parts, CSAT and GS. Uh, let me first cover G GS uh, GS again, you have around 13 to 14 questions, which are from economics, at least 13 to 14 questions from economics as commerce students, you have a big advantage here. So as commerce students, you have to get 28 to 30 marks there, right? Uh, which is two into 14 or 13, maybe one, two questions you can leave. So my approach was that I would use Ronald sir's book. Uh, I covered it very well. And, uh, I looked at Vivek Singh sir's 550 questions booklet, 
and i revised that a few times uh, that allowed me across three years i don't think there were more than two questions in convex which i could not attempt uh, so as commerce graduates that is the big advantage you have so you have to go all in on that the second major area uh, that i found that i could differentiate again the in upsc everywhere you have to think about what is my strength where can i differentiate <laughs> because it's a competitive exam the second area that i could differentiate in was mapping because geography do now does not get asked so i knew that geography like uh, and those questions are very tough so i did not go too much for geography maybe three four questions get uh, get asked from geography i over prepared mapping uh, i used to have an excel where i used to have a list of all rivers all lakes all mountains all mountain passes and uh, all countries in middle east i used to use a app called setera uh, which is which is there for mapping where you can play mapping games so that was very helpful for me mapping is around four to five questions at least set era s e t s e t e w -R, r a set era set era so uh, that's a very helpful app if you want to do mapping mapping is again five to seven questions so you will get around 14 marks there so you are already at 44 if you have been able to cover both these then you have to go for uh, see this is the area where you can differentiate mapping plus economy the area where you have to cover like basically th this is the offensive strategy the defensive strategy is in polity history right modern history so polity and modern history is that you have to have 100% accuracy in these anyone who is a serious aspirant is not going to give away even one question in polity or modern history because everyone has lakshmikant covered end to end everyone has spectrum covered end to end at least 5 6 times so if you are not able to let's say for instance answer two to three questions in these areas then you are hugely disadvantaged because no one even someone who is going for the first attempt is not going to answer these questions wrong so this was the defensive strategy that i'm going to have 100% accuracy in these questions and the third area which i thought that i i'm going to have to have a lot of guesswork is science and technology and environment so i used for environment i used pmf ias for science and technology also i used pmf ias i did not have many other sources but i focused a lot on current affairs so pt365 for these two subjects especially as well as economy because economy has a lot of current affairs you must cover these three current affairs economy environment and science technology current affairs are extremely crucial uh, apart from this you can focus on static static or all other areas for instance culture you don't need to do a lot of current affairs current affairs questions don't hardly get asked right so that was my strategy that yaar what is getting asked let me prepare accordingly uh, and my every day i used to do the same exercise that let me pick up previous year question and see that what i'm reading is even relevant or not that is something that a lot of people go wrong in in this journey that you go into a rabbit hole and you never end for instance you pick up some book let's say for instance agnihotri i i've not read that book but people say that that's for science tech uh, and it takes one month or one and a half months to cover but no question is going to get asked from that static portion right so choose your books wisely and always ask yourself whether it's relevant two questions not. are there can you read yes uh sir it's ne is it necessary to study all ncert books coaching center multiple times see it depends on uh, two factors one is uh, how comfortable are you with uh, general studies if you are someone who has general idea who reads the newspaper generally i don't think there is a necessity for reading ncert books as such what you can do is that you can read some summary notes or you you look at some videos Uh, which can very quickly cover. Don't spend, let's say, for instance, one month on NCRTs. So, if you have to cover NCRTs, there are sufficient sources which provide a summarized view of how to cover uh, these. You can focus on that. Uh, my dipstick on how I looked at NCRTs is that see, let me look, pick up the advanced book. If I'm not able to understand the advanced book, then I need to go back to the basic. But I'm not going to start from the basic, assuming that I don't know anything, right? And then cover it because. NCERT is not created from the point of view from UPSC. They are going to write each and every line, thinking that you are a sixth class student, right? So you need to have that view that you need to be like a UPSC aspirant. So you look at a video, cover that. Uh, so that is that. One query is there. So one question, one just adding to one part on coaching center books uh, for GS. I would say that uh, just uh, consult some of your seniors who are from that coaching. whether those books are sufficient i have seen a lot of people who read those coaching books multiple times then come back and say that let me cover the basic books also for instance you have covered some polity notes that some uh, gs coaching has given 
then after one year you realize that okay now i need to cover lakshmi kant again right so it would be tough for you to do that so please get an educated view from your seniors who have done coaching from that institute on whether you need to whether that book is sufficient for covering the base books or not uh, for especially polity and uh, modern history i would suggest that lakshmi kant and spectrum are essential so you must cover that uh, the second question can we quote current affairs in answers with relevance i think it is about yeah. means right oh yes certainly uh, for current affairs you that is your differentiating aspect for instance i mentioned about the tata uh, air india merger so those areas you must quote current affairs <laughs> list uh, when you do your prelims you will have enough knowledge to use those prelims ka gyan of current affairs in your mains answers so i don't think that will be an issue and you must quote recent events in your uh, mains answers one more question is this is not left how many questions to attempt in prelims 2024 considering the difficulty level similar to 23 yeah that's a very good question uh, in my opinion and i've done a lot of analysis on this you it would be very difficult for you to crack prelims without attempting less than 85 questions like you have to attempt more than 85 questions to get through prelims in my opinion uh, and the reason is this that for general category for general category uh, i have done that analysis only for general category but according to me uh, for general and obc because obc also has similar cut off if you don't attempt around 85 questions see i i have interacted with a lot of people who are selected candidates none of them know for sure that they have like they are they know don't know more than 35 questions for sure so if you are someone who is an unselected candidate maybe you are five questions at disadvantage so maybe you know 30 questions for sure so if you know 30 questions for sure then you are at 60 marks right uh, maybe you will do one or two errors so that will put you at 55 marks you need around 20 marks at least if you assume that this year's cut off is going to be there in my opinion this year's cut off is not going to be there because people will prepare for csat right so it will go to maybe 80 which means that you will need 25 more marks 25 more marks requires you to do at least 30 more questions with a hit rate of a very good hit rate right north of 70% which is unheard of like generally people like for instance i had a hit rate of 66 to 67% in guesses so in my opinion you have to attempt more than 85 questions the best way to judge for yourself is that do a lot of mocks select the mocks that you are going to do uh, for instance vision abhyas is a very very good mock uh, you can you, you must do that the three or four mocks that they have forum not that great in terms of uh, mock quality they are not very good predictors but uh, still it's good for practice gs score is good so you you do a lot of mocks to realize what is your accuracy rate the one other thing that i would say that uh, you should do while you are attempting these mocks are that you should identify the category of error that you are doing so i used to have three categories of error that i do one error is that i knew this absolutely i did a very simple mistake for instance reading mistake so i used to call them mar mistakes that i should be hit for this this mistake the second question the second type of errors is that it's fine i made a guess i did it wrong right so for instance i had a very clear schema of things that yaar agar do option mein eliminate kar pa raha hu to main attempt to karunga hi karunga nahi to mere 85 questions ke bhi attempt ho hi nahi sakte so in a question i am able to eliminate two options i have to take a guess between the two so if i get it wrong i am not going to hit myself for it i didn't know it i took a educated guess of the two i got one wrong so that's okay good and the third aspect that i used to have is that i didn't know it but i attempted and got it wrong so you will see a lot of people doing this also in upsc prelims people will say i have a gut feeling about it <laughs> there is no gut feeling about a question in upsc hmm. it you either know it you don't know it or you take an educated guess right uh, so those are the three mistakes so categorize your mistakes also categorize where you are committing these mistakes for instance if you commit more mistakes in economy as a commerce student then you really need to buck up there because that is your strength area if you are making mistakes in polity most probably you are making silly mistakes so you need to focus you, there is a focus issue there is a performance issue you need to sit more sit longer so categorize your mistakes some questions have come revision for commerce as even remaining few days out of touch of any subject makes it totally new and requires safe efforts yeah uh, this, again that yes yes yes, yes continue that is something that i faced after prelims because i had the strategy that i used to read uh, study commerce only in that 3 months 
which is after prelim still means uh, the way to do that is that according to me start with the area which has the most impact when you are doing revision go for numericals first then go for theory in numericals then go for paper 2 because see paper 2 is something which even if let's say for instance you have no idea about 10 days before the exam in 10 days we all are competent enough to read that and grasp some aspect of it we are able to we are able to go into the paper and score 110 or 115 marks but that's not going to be the case with numerical so when you are starting re revision start with revision of numericals so that you have enough time to you know practice it and get it uh, get the nuances right get enough practice under the belt so that you are able to do it in time then go to theory then if in paper 1 then go to theory in paper 2 so that's my broad advice on how to approach uh, this yeah presentation previous year answer sheet could you please suggest applications applications they must be asking of uh, apps okay okay apps uh, so one is setera that i used extensively another uh, there is there is a polity app uh which i used for prelims specifically i can look at that uh, there was app by i think it's something called sanya education which has this app on polity i'll just look it up no sir s i i'll just let you know sir. that's a good app for practicing polity questions so i used to do that whenever i was free um Yeah, so there's this uh, there's this app called Indian Polity Quiz, which is by Sana Education. Uh, this is generally Sana Edu Tech has good coverage, at least. So there might be some questions which are wrong, some answers which are wrong, but you will get a lot of practice. Chapter wise, you will get a lot of MCQs, because that's a challenge that I faced that chapter wise questions may be wrong in Polity and History. you get a lot of these mcqs but you have to again like if you have read one chapter you want to practice some questions you don't have much sources for that so this was one which i found a lot of questions in uh important element of improving present so sir can you upload your simple mock so for commerce optional yes we will make a and for my uh, means i think it's uploaded on forum is i wrote answers in forum uh, you can also look at my if you want to look at closer to examination mock answer sheets you can look at abhyas answer sheets which are uploaded on vision is uh, so commerce copies we will upload how to plan revision for commerce even the minimum few days out okay this i covered for time allowed and daily number I I did uh, I did not take any coaching for either GS or uh, optional. So uh, I took sir's uh, books and I took sir's uh, uh, on the the test series. test series, right? So my approach for commerce generally was that I am going to in my main prep most of the time I am going to spend around two hours daily uh, practicing questions and about thirty to forty five minutes practicing some some theory aspect. uh depends on what kind of uh, student you are my approach was that i will not subject study more than two to three subjects in a day maximum was three because i felt that if you study too many subjects then the marginal utility reduces so i used to start my day off with some numericals of commerce optional because i felt like an adrenaline rush when i used to be able to do some of those uh, questions right and get it correct because baki sab to bahut hi zyada daily kitna daily kitna time lagate the study mein सर पढ़ाई में सर डिपेंड करता था जो 77 डेज थे फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट जो था उसमें रिक्वायरमेंट बहुत ज्यादा थी मेरी तो उसमें तो सर आई ऑनेस्टली स्टडीड मोर देन 13 14 आवर्स अ डे बिकॉज़ देयर इज नो वे दैट आई कुड हैव कवर्ड जीएस प्लस ऑप्शनल फ्रॉम स्क्रैच इन माय फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट बट अपने कॉमर्स के मार्क्स भी बता दीजिए सर दैट इट वाज नॉट वेरी ग्रेट आई थिंक आई स्कोर्ड 148 टू 248 मार्क्स 127 प्लस 121 इन दैट अटेम्प्ट 
but that attempt sir i think that year generally the highest was 275 mm-hmm. 2021 if i am not wrong yes yes so that attempt uh, i did not score too well uh, in that year because i was trying to manage a lot of things i did not have a lot of idea about still you got selected in danix na yes, <laughs> good sir uh, apart from that i would say in the next attempt bare minimum is 8 hours so i used to ensure that in bad days i would do 8 hours in good days i would used to i used to be able to get to 10 to 11 hours i don't think it's possible to do quality study more than that those number of hours so when i mean quality study i mean that you don't have any thoughts for that 30 45 minute study part that you have one thing sir i used to do a lot so in bad days i used to do 8 hours uh, if i had two to three bad days on a consecutive way i had a few very good friends who were preparing along with me so i would just ring them up and say that see i am having a tough time going more than 8 hours i am not motivated enough i need to have you or i can i come over or can we sit together and study so agar ek din bhi fir and when we used to sit together and study to ek dusre ko push karte hue 13 14 hours bhi khich jate the so i had a friend called rajan lohia who's from my college who's a cpa frank one and also is now sdm rajasthan uh, so i used to study a lot with him i used to study a lot with ishita uh, who rank one last year so uh, she is one of the most disciplined person i have Uh, I I would actually want to those who are preparing for mains. I would just like to give one anecdote of hers, which I found very inspiring. Uh, so in CSE 2022, uh, I 2021, which was my first attempt, it was her second prelims. Uh, she was not able to crack that prelims, and I got through in my first prelims. So there was she of course was very heartbroken on the day when her prelims did not come through, but uh, we had a call and she said that. See, you also take the prelim uh, forum ka answer test series. I'll also take it, and uh, let me do as much as you are doing, so that I am prepared on GS. And you will not believe me. Uh, in the next three months, I was putting in thirteen, fourteen hours, right? Because I had to do commerce plus, I had to do GS one, two, three, four. I would say that she was putting in at least twelve hours without having an examination in front of her in mains, and you can see it in her answer writing today. see that's not come in 4 months that's come she attempted one whole mains without writing a mains in those 4 months she wrote 12 papers in an examination format so i would say that those who are not able to for instance unfortunately you are not able to make through prelims ensure that you use that time to the maximum the second key takeaway is that rely on your peers form a good peer circle and after a point studying becomes enjoyable if you have the right kind of people around you so ensure that you have that please be uh, with people who you are okay being vulnerable with who you can call up and say that yaar i am feeling very bad can we study please together right so mm-hmm. i just need two hours of your time or something like that so uh, that's another thing. good that's good that's inspiring and uh, informing also right yes. we won't take more time uh, yes and a small this is for you sir uh, this sir please come this side photo lenyo thank you sir that is solent structure of governance in india i wish you read it and uh, absolutely yes sir. and i wish you get time. yes i wish you read uh, you get ifs also thank you sir yes yes may you go thank you sir